welcome this is a continuation of the previous lecture so in this lecture we will be discussing about logical and physical address space and also we will be discussing about static and dynamic linking so first let us try to understand uh, what is a logical address space and what is a physical address space the address space that are generated by the cpu are called as logical address space and these are also the address space that are used in the program so the user program knows only about logical address okay the address that are generated by the cpu are called as logical address the code also knows only about the logical address logical address or otherwise called as virtual address because these are not the actual physical address okay the address that are seen by the memory unit are called as physical address the address that are seen by the memory unit are called as physical address so if you recall in the last lecture we have discussed three types of binding schemes binding at compile time binding at load time and binding at execution time okay if the binding happens at compile time or at the load time then the logical address and the physical address will be same there won't be any difference okay if the binding happens at compile time or at load time then the logical address and physical address will be same there will not be any difference between the logical address and the physical address okay because uh, because you know where the memory where the starting address of the program is okay where, where the starting address of the code should be loaded in case of compile time before compilation itself you know the starting address so the physical address will be directly created or the absolute address will be created absolute address is otherwise called as physical address okay so let us note this also absolute address is otherwise called as physical address okay logical address is otherwise called as virtual address right so if the so if if you know the if the compiler knows the starting address uh, beforehand then it will directly create the absolute code with absolute address or code code with physical address similarly if the compiler even do not know even if it do not know it will create a code with relocatable address and that relocatable address will be obviously converted to uh, absolute address during load time during load time okay so the point is if the if the logical or physical address scheme is used uh, uh, if the compile time or lo load time addressing scheme is used then the logical and the physical address will be same okay but if execution time addressing binding scheme is used but if binding is done during execution time uh, then the logical address and the physical address will not be same they will differ okay is it clear if the if the binding is done at execution time then the logical address and the physical address will not be same they will differ how we, how it will and then how to map from logical address to uh, physical address that's what here we are going to discuss with a, a small example but before that the set of all logical address generated by a program is called as logical address space the set of all physical address generated by a program is called as physical address space okay the set of all logical address generated by a program is called as logical address space and the set of all physical address generated by a program is called as physical address space okay. we have discussed uh, if the if the binding is done during execution time then the logical address and physical address will differ okay so there should be some unit which converts the logical or virtual address to physical address there are many techniques to do that but here let us see a very basic technique like how the logical or virtual address can be converted to physical or absolute address so basically this conversion happens through hardware this conversion happens through hardware so there is a hardware unit called memory management unit there is a hardware unit called memory management unit which will do this process and for this particular process 
base register will be called as relocation register quoting what you call virtual address to physical address we use base register but in this context base registers will be register will be called as relocation register okay so 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 the user program as we already mentioned user program deals with only logical address it never sees the physical address okay so execution time binding occurs when reference is made to the location of the memory in run time so so what is execution time binding run time binding means see say your program is referring to a variable x okay so so where this x is that what is the corresponding memory that location will be decided only at run time so that is called as execution time binding if it is compile time binding it will be low its its uh, its address will be identified during compile time if it is load time binding its address will be identified during the load time in the execution time binding the variables the symbolic address will be converted to the physical address only during the run time okay logical address or it's, it's not symbolic address the logical address the logical address may be uh, the logical address will be bounded to physical address only during the uh, run time that is what is called as execution time binding now let us see this how it happens with an example okay say this diagram shows that assume that the cpu is creating an logical address 346 so this is the address created by the cpu which is 346 but now you are you, we are using execution time binding so the actual mapping to the physical address will be done at run time okay so there will be a register called as relocation register which is nothing but the base register so whatever the content in the relocation register that will be added with the logical address as a result what you get that will be the actual physical address that will be the actual physical address so so that is what we discussed in execution time if the binding happens at execution time then the logical address and the physical address will differ but this will not be the case if uh, if, if the binding happens at compile time or load time in that case uh, whether it is compile time binding or load time binding uh, you will find the you will know the starting address in the compile time in the sense before compiling you know in the load time in the sense before loading you know so the cpu will know from which location the address should be paused so cpu will directly pause the uh, of the correct address in that address uh, so the logical address itself will be the physical address okay right and so so if you are using a runtime binding the the particular routine will not be called will, will not be loaded until it is called the, the particular routine will not be loaded until it is called what does it mean assume that you have written a program say it may be a c program or a java program or whatever it may be assume the program contains many modules like there is a main module from where the program execution starts there is a main module okay so these are the various modules assume there is another module module 1 there is a module 1 there is module 2 like that there are different modules are there there are different modules right maybe up to up to there is there is up to module n up to module n or there okay now now what the now the question is will all the modules will be loaded into the memory at the same time no it means then you are wasting the memory okay so what will happen in the sense what will happen in the sense first only the main module will be loaded only the main module will be first loaded into the memory at some point in the main module it may call module 1 once the module 1 is called then it will be loaded okay only when module 1 is getting called uh, then only its logical address will be converted to physical address so when module 1 is being called cpu will send its logical address and then uh, using this process it will be converted to physical address and to the appropriate location it will be loaded like that whenever a particular module is required then it will be loaded thereby the memory will be utilized effectively and also uh, routines will be called only routines will be loaded only if it is called say some routines are not at all called say mod, say some routines are called based on some if condition so only if the condition is satisfied it will be called say module 2 is never called 
then it will never be loaded. And all, all other routines will be on the disk in relocatable load format. Okay, that is relocatable means this is logical address is nothing but relocatable address because it is not the actual physical address. After adding with the relocation register, you are getting the physical address. So, so in case of execution, uh, if execution binding scheme is used, then the logical address is nothing but the relocatable address. And for doing this, no special hardware support is required. It can be implemented uh, through program design itself. And the OS help uh, is not much required other than providing uh, libraries to implement dynamic binding. Okay, because, because anyway, during uh, uh, loading, the it should be linked with the libraries, right? So we will discuss about that in the, the next slide Yeah, here. See the, this uh, then so so in this particular slide we'll be discussing about dynamic linking. So before that, what is linking? Linking means linking means connecting your object code. Say you have written a C program or any other program, but your object code alone it cannot execute because in your program you may be referring some some library files. So those library files should be connected those library files should be connected with, with your program. So connecting your object code with the library files, that process is called as linking. Connecting the library files, connecting the library files uh, with the object code of the user program, uh, that process is called as linking. Now this linking can be either static linking or it can be dynamic linking, okay? If the loader does this lo linking, if the loader does this linking, then that is called as static linking. Okay. In static linking means what? System libraries and program code combined by the loader in the binary program image. Okay. So this will be stored, this will be stored in binary format, right? Then only it can execute, right? So if loader does this process, if loader combines the object code with the system library, then that is called a static linking. So uh, loading, so loader, lo so it means before loading into the memory, you are doing this. Okay, before loading into the memory, you are doing this process, right? So that is called as static binding. In dynamic binding, in dynamic binding, this linking process will be postponed until execution time, right? In, in dynamic binding, so, so loader will not do this linking. The linking will be postponed until execution time. During execution time only it will be linked. Okay, so so what does so see? Let us uh, see this with an example. So assume that assume that uh, uh, say say let us say C code. Assume this is a C code. Int int C int C. Here I am using C is equal to power of c is equal to power of x comma 3. So it will calculate the power of x comma 3. That is, it will calculate x cube and it will store in c. So before that, here we are declaring x is equal to 9. We are declaring x is equal to 9. Okay. Say the respective header files are added as you include math.h, whatever it may be, that is added, okay? C is assigned with nine. Now, what is this math, math? So what is this power? Power is not an user-defined module. Power is a predefined module, which is available in math.h. Power is a predefined module, which is available in math.h. So you are including math.h in this program. Okay. So already assume math.h is included uh, by by using hash include, okay. Hash include math dot h whatever you, you right? Okay. So, so this power is the library function. So your all these are your code. This will be co converted to machine code. This everything will be converted to machine code. But this power machine code is already available, and that should be connected with your program. So that is called as linking. If that is happening at compile, if that is happening at load time then that is called a static linking. But if this process is postponed, if this process is postponed, 
to run time then that is called as dynamic linking but how will you postpone to run time so this is postpone to it can be postpone to run time by using a small piece of code called stub okay by using a small piece of code called stub so stub so wherever this kind of linking comes wherever this kind of linking comes this i mean wherever this kind of reference to library comes that will be replaced with stub that will be replaced with stub wherever this kind of reference to library comes that will be replaced by stub what is stub what is stub stub is so that will be replaced by 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 stub stub is actually a small piece of code that indicates how to locate the appropriate library routing which is in the memory right stub is a small piece of code which helps to locate the appropriate library routing in the memory okay but 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 if it is if the routine is already available in the memory it will help to it will it will help to connect with that particular routine it will the stub is the one using that the appropriate routine in the memory can be located if the routine is already in the memory okay if it is not in the memory if it is not in the memory then stub will help to load the routine then stub will help to load the routine and then connect okay so stub will perform both the process either way right so stub will first check whether that particular library routine is available or not if it is available then it will locate it during execution time okay if it is not available then stub will load that routine and then it will uh, locate to it okay so by this what happens in the sense say there are many programs say there are uh, not only one program no there may be many program in the memory many user may be executing say there is a program p1.c there is a program p2.c say like that up to uh, 10 programs or uh, say 20, 10 or 20 programs are there in the memory obviously it will not be in c format it will be in the object 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 code okay so so let us say p1.o p2.o like, like that right say different programs may refer to different uh, libraries right but but with dynamic binding what happens these libraries will be loaded only once to the memory only one copy of the library will be loaded and uh, multiple programs may refer this maybe this power may be used by pro pro program 1 and also program 2 then the stub will just locate here okay like that wherever it is uh, wherever the corresponding libraries are there that will be located but if you are using static binding then this code will repeat here again this library code uh, will repeat in p1 it will repeat in p2 like that okay so that is the advantage of using dynamic binding and that is done by stub first stub will check whether it is in the uh, the routine is already in the memory or not if it is there it will just locate if it is not there it will uh, it will load it and then it will locate it okay there is something called as shared memory shared libraries see what is meant by shared libraries see, these libraries will update it is not that uh, the libraries once it is created it is that's all no uh, the particular uh, uh, what do you call the creators of the language they will keep updating the libraries for example whatever the library is available in c or java they will keep updating so the new versions of libraries may also be available for example some of your program may be compiled with with uh, with new libraries assuming with new libraries and some of the program may be compiled with the old libraries okay in that case the memory may have both libraries in that case the memory may have both the versions of the library it may have new version and also it may have the old version if a program is using the old version of the library uh, that will locate to the old version of the library and if some other program is using new version of the library uh, then it may refer to the new version of the library so that concept is called as shared libraries okay so i think the point is clear the libraries need will not be it is not that it will never change it may change the libraries may change and it may get updated okay so maybe your program sometimes if it, it may be compiled with the new library or some other programs or some other user programs may be compiled compiled with old library in that case uh, the program or the stub will refer to the appropriate library in that case both the library should be loaded into the 
memory. Okay, that concept is called as shared libraries. Okay, so so that's it about uh, uh, logical address to physical address conversion and and dynamic linking. Right. Let us stop here. Thank you.